Hi friends, it's Amy from humilityanddoxology.com. And if you, like me, live in the United States, you are probably beginning to make plans for your July 4th celebrations. And I thought, in accordance with that, how about if we take a few weeks of our year of memory work and look at some patriotic um, patriotic documents, original sources, if you will. And so this week, we're going to begin with an excerpt from Patrick Henry's famous speech at St. John's Church, Richmond, Virginia, March 23rd, 1775. Now, if you get a chance to ever travel to Richmond, I would encourage you to go to this church. They have a great um, historic docent-led tour. Uh, the um, the graveyard surrounding the church also has lots of uh, famous individuals, and you can go uh, on a hunt to find to find their gravestones. But it's really fun to be in the actual building where Patrick Henry gave this speech, and uh, maybe to declaim it a little bit because you're going to memorize it with me, right? Okay, so grab your principal, and you'll see by the dot, 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 where I have eliminated a portion of the speech for the sake of time, but I encourage you to um, take the opportunity to read the speech in its entirety when you have a moment. All right, so without further ado, oh, let's see if we can get it to stand up this time. Sometimes it just has trouble here. I will just hold it. All right, Patrick Henry, March 23rd. 1775. Mr. President, no man thinks more highly than I do of the patriotism as well as abilities of the very worthy gentlemen who have just addressed the house. But different men often see the same subject in different lights, and therefore I hope it will not be thought disrespectful to those gentlemen if, entertaining as I do, opinions of a character very opposite to theirs, I shall speak forth my sentiments freely and without reserve. This is no time for ceremony. The question before the house is one of awful moment in this country. For my own part, I consider it as nothing less than a question of freedom or slavery, and in proportion to the magnitude of the subject ought to be the freedom of the debate. It is only in this way that we can hope to arrive at truth and fulfill the great responsibility which we hold to God and our country. Should I keep back my opinions at such a time through fear of giving offense, I should consider myself as guilty of treason towards my country and of an act of disloyalty toward the majesty of heaven, which I revere above all earthly kings. There is a just God who presides over the destinies of nations and who will raise up friends to fight our battles for us. The battle, sir, is not to the strong alone. It is to the vigilant, the active, the brave. Besides, sir, we have no election. If we were base enough to desire it, it is now too late to retire from the contest. There is no retreat, but in submission and slavery. Our chains are forged. Their clanking may be heard on the plains of Boston. The war is inevitable, and let it come. I repeat it, sir. Let it come. It is vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty, 
or give me death. See you next week.